welcome back to another video people so this time around something a bit different i've now come down for the first trip of the year back to the club water um that you've seen in a couple of videos back um if you haven't seen that video obviously if you have a look it's the episode one of the club lake diaries and we are on a eight acre gravel pit um sort of local to me I'm not sure about the head of fish now. There is a good amount of fish in here and there's some real nice looking fish and they go to mid 30s, so I've been told. So um, it's not the easiest, but it's no means like the hardest. It's one of those really, if you know what you're doing and you know your watercraft and whatnot and you know, you're in with a good chance of catching. So yeah, I'm here for 36 hours, possibly another night i don't know i'm not gonna hold my hopes up with that but if, if um things go okay i might be able to squeeze in another night but um yeah other than that we've got 36 hours to try and get one of these out of here get one well, of my first fish out of here to be honest so um yeah i'm gonna get on and i've already got the bivy up because uh not that there's any rain forecast, but you know, the weather at the moment is just, just seems to do what it wants, doesn't it really? So um, yeah, I was sort of having a look around, stood in one swim for a while, seeing if I could see any shows, and it's just started spitting, um, but I could just feel it was gradually getting worse, and it's that horrible fine stuff, and I haven't got a waterproof cover on my barrow, so I'm just looking at my barrow, and like everything is starting to get a bit wet, so. Yeah, I decided to opt for this swim, I've had a bit of intel on it from a friend that fishes here anyway, so I just got the bivy on up and yeah, now I'm gonna get the rod sorted. So yeah, be right back people. All right, bye for now. Okay guys, so with rod number one, um, I tied some fresh combi rigs up at home. Again on the standard hair this time. I'm gonna fish the yellow peanut wafter on this one. And yeah, tactics wise, you're gonna go with pretty much the same as Edenville really, apart from I have got a bag of peanut chops here that have had a good lacing of cloud. And also the peanut dip. I've had a good dose of that. So I don't know, I might put a few spawnfuls over the top I'm not sure at the moment I might even just put these mesh bags out like we were doing at Eden Vale with the uh, stick mix that I made up and just six free offerings inside so yeah anyway I'm gonna get on get one tied up and get this rod out because uh I've only got a couple more hours until the sun goes down so yeah be right back guys Okay guys, so there we go. Uh, pretty much the same tactics as in the last video. And yeah, mesh bag with the three offerings in. And this one is gonna go out. Uh, it's about 11 and three quarter wraps. I don't know if you can, but well, there's a slight alcove. You've got this big tree here and it sort of goes back in and comes back out. Um, I had a lead about over there and it, it's nice and firm. It's not gravelly, but it does go down nice and firm. Um, as you come back, I'd say any more than about two rod lengths, three rod lengths. As you come back a couple of rod lengths, the bottom then turns really choddy. So yeah, I'm gonna get this out there. Hopefully, there are some carp over there. All right. I've got one rod out there. Just getting that set up, really. There we go. Just in case the inevitable happens. Here already. Right. Let's get the other two rods sorted. 
case you have decided what I'm going to do is actually get three or four spoonfuls of the chops over the top just in case they're up for a little bit of food you never know And you just love it when it doesn't open. So with it being winter, obviously as well as depth, I mean, this is the deepest part of the lake. Um, so I've been told by a mate of mine that fishes, obviously from there upwards it's shallower. But as well as depth, also in the winter, cover is going to be good. So I mocked in all three rods basically along this far margin what I'm going to do is probably have one a bit further back but we've got the left hand rod is currently out now over in this little alcove um, we've got like a big sort of bush in the middle here and then again we've got a real big little well almost like a little bay here um, I'm pushing back into that sensibly not too far because this tree on the right does come out of the water and it's quite big but yeah it is literally going down with a donk I think is it about the same boom see that tip just fly back then yeah so I'm going to see how many wraps that is I think it's about the same amount of wraps maybe 12 or maybe 13 but yeah I'm going to get that one the same on a mesh bag and then the middle rod, I'm thinking maybe a little bit further back. I might sort of pull back until I start to fill the, the thicker silt. And I'm gonna leave that one on a pop-up, just on its own. See uh, see what comes of that. Probably a fluoro um, bubble gum, I'm thinking. All right, let's be right back, guys. Eleven and three quarter wraps again. Okay, good. Um, guys, so that's rod number two. As you can see, they're exactly the same again, except I've gone for a white wafter this time. What we was using in the last video. Um, that's it. Rinse and repeat. Gonna get that out there now. And a couple of spoonfuls of chopped over the top, and then the third rod. I don't know if I'm going to find an area for that really and clip up or whether I might just literally wang it out there like a Roma. Might move it about. But yeah, this wind's picked up a bit now. They've got a bit of a crosswind. And that was exactly the same just short of 12 wraps again All right
here guys so basically what i've decided to do with this third rod is not fish in between the left and well the, the two that are already out um i was looking at aiming as far left as i can over to this huge tree that's overhanging um but it's quite sort of thick and choddy but what i have found is i don't know about halfway just over halfway across i guess on the way back it just came into a lovely there it is there it is there that is lovely clean as a whistle that i'm gonna get the rod up at 45 degrees i'm gonna get the rod up at the same angle you'd roughly finish with a cast get that in the clip And yeah, so that's, that rod is just going to be on it. There you go. It's just, it's not big at all. It's just a few knots. But yeah, that is where I'm going to just get a single pop-up on its own, I think, for now. All right, see how many wraps that is. Get it out there. Because this light is fading. Right guys, so this is what's going to go on rod number three. Just um, a stiff end rig that I've tied up myself there. And then we've got a pastel or washed out, as I think they're technically known as, washed out bubble gum pop up there that are smelling nice and potent. They've been in, been in soak in the tubs, obviously, since I first got on the bubble gum, really. So um, if it ever decides to come off the line... Yeah, we're going to get that out. Um, what I think I am going to do, I'm going to get that pop-up out there now, but um, I've got all the bubble gum stuff with me. So what I think I'm going to do is actually find the crusher. Um, I'm going to grind down some bubble gum. Um, and then I might actually get a bubble gum wafter on there, match the hatch and some like ground down bubble gum and then the same really five or six freebies in a mesh bag and get that out there and i might just literally leave that out there on its own um not put anything over the top of it so yeah i will be right back guys sorry this is all a bit brief but i'm sort of in a bit of a rush really i didn't get down here until um i don't know one o'clock or something like that i don't know so yeah a bit go go so yeah speak to you all soon well that's it guys all three rods are out now and yeah so we've got the uh well right hand rod and middle rod are out in front of the island basically on the peanut and the mesh bags and then the left hand rod is on that pop up on that well just off of that gravel area um, this isn't the sort of venue where you want to be sort of reeling in and recasting every half hour so with it being I think it's about half past four now so unless I get any sort of indication that I've been done or obviously if, unless I get a fish um, which well, yeah, would be good but yeah I mean unless anything happens I'm just going to leave the rods for the night um, so yeah I'm going to get on now finish getting the, the bivy sorted and get a kettle and everything out and whatnot and um i'll be back to you guys soon all right bye for now all right guys yeah so update time obviously sun's gone down we're into the evening now um well say so we're into the evening i think it's what it's like seven something like that now um, but yeah, um, nothing as of yet, obviously, but the right hand rod, I don't know if there's any crayfish in here. Um, I wouldn't say it's a bream, but it's as though something keeps playing around with the right hand rod. I keep getting like little, every now and then, little sort of successions of bleeps. But it's strange, like the bobbin's not moving really a lot. Um, it's definitely not the wind, it's definitely like something going on, but. Yeah, I don't know whether that's like line bites 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna leave it for a bit, really. So yeah, I don't know. It could be like, because I'm fishing like fluorocarbon and it's sort of relatively, well, fluorocarbon coated, so I'm saying, it's, but it's relatively slack. So I'm kind of wondering as well, whether, you know, it's picking up line bites. So, um, yeah, you never know. It might be something feeding on the spot. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna get on now and do some food. Um, have a cup of tea and that, and then uh, gonna get in the bag. Because I'm knackered, to be honest, guys. So, yeah, speak to you in a bit. amazing what you can cook yourself up on the bank guys literally uh, the ridge monkey toaster that is i split it and then i've just got a couple of pork chops from down at the tesco express before i came here um fried them up for a bit and chopped them up and then um just literally a pack of um egg noodles fresh ones and uh yeah just stir fry i think that's um mixed vegetable one or something but yeah fried the pork off for a bit chuck the stir fry mix in then i chuck the noodles in for a bit more then poured that sauce all over the top of it plum and hoisin it smells nice and then i put the uh other section back on the ridge monkey and um closed it down so it was nice and sealed and um just turn the heat down then, left it simmering for probably about five minutes. But yeah, it looks banging. Well, no fishes yet, but I'm getting something weird on the right hand rod happening. I don't know, I wouldn't say bream, but wondering if there's some craze in here to be honest. Just getting something like play about with it, either that or because I'm using like fluorocarbon coated line either that or it's like a line bite of some sort between the rod tip and the lead i don't know maybe could be picking up some movement from carp but yeah strange i'm gonna leave it for now just in case it's fish feeding over that bait and sort of clipping the line i don't know but yeah i'm gonna get on and demolish this anyway and then I don't know, you might hear from me again, if not, unless there's any fish to report, I'll speak to you guys tomorrow, right, be right back. Well, morning people, um, a quiet night on the fish front anyway. The alarms were going all night, but yeah, that was to do with some sort of storm that just ripped through here. Again, I'm pretty certain it wasn't forecast anyway. 
Um, I think that was forecast for Friday and Saturday, I believe. But yeah, unbelievable. The real strong gusts, and then it was just shaking the whole pod, and the alarms were going, and I kept getting woken up. Just like broken sleep all through the night, really. But yeah, is what it is, isn't it? But um, yeah, guy down to the right of me has moved though, which is the better swim of the two. Uh, like say my mate was letting me know um, that yesterday, um, the fish actually get out in front of that swim this time of year, shouting on the back of the, well, I guess on the back of the wind on the back of the island. So. I don't know, I'm going to try and find out what the situation is in a minute with doing another night or not. And, um, I might drop in there, I don't know, either that or I might move, if I don't, I'll move the right hand rod to the corner of the island, which is, um, yeah, last night I spoke to my mate and he was sort of saying to me that that spot on the corner of the island um, always produces for him, but I thought it was the other guy's territory down to the right of me. But apparently it isn't. It's one of these, you know, just the way the swims are. Um, sometimes it can cause rucks and that. Um, he should fit, technically basically be like sort of in the open water off the corner of the island. And he said to me that he'd probably be pushing about 20 wraps up the side of it. But yeah, I was going to drop in there when I first got in here out of courtesy just to ask where his left hand rod was but I mean, it's just like manic getting set up and that and I never got round to it and then it was dark and he was in his bivy all tucked up so I'm not really one to just walk down and in, into a swim you know stick my head in someone's bivy so yeah um figure that out in a minute but um other than that yeah I need to get on and go cotty cotty <laughs> I need to get on and have a coffee I've got a horrible dry mouth all right, be back soon, guys. Bye for now. Well, I've moved, guys. Yeah, I was literally, I noticed it. Well, obviously, I noticed that bloke had moved, and then I was stood there in two minds. I just couldn't think what to do, because, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we're all guilty for thinking, oh, you know, can I be bothered to lug everything? But, um, yeah, I was stood there. And then a fish just boshed out in open water in front of like that swims territory off the island. So I was like, no, that's it. You've got to do it. And then whilst I was moving, another couple more showed. So I just literally wang that rod out roughly to where they were showing to. Wrapped two of them up to that, which was um, just short of 19 wraps. And then clipped the pod rod up a little bit shorter to allow for the full back. And just got them out there as quick as I could. And a few spumfuls of chops over the top so see what happens um it's gone a bit quiet now but um obviously the commotion of casting out and everything it's gone a bit quiet after that but they're out there so this is apparently where they sit to in the winter so i think it's definitely better than being where i was i'm um, just being confined to fishing that side of the island got a lot more scope in this swim now so yeah i don't know See what happens, fingers crossed in it. All right, guys, I'm gonna get on and have a coffee. I still haven't had that coffee, so yeah, I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're gonna get the left hand rod out now. Um, it's pretty much nearly out of the stick mix. So I've made up a fresh batch, which again, it's the peanut oils and the cloud. Uh, just in case you didn't watch the last video, that's what we've put in there, a good lashing of that. Hopefully that sort of disperses and creates like a halo. Also the oils. And this time I've actually included some of the two millimeter pellet. Uh, awesome, these pellets. I was using them down at Wadmill 
in the bubble gum in those solid PVA bags when I had those 12 fish. But yeah, I've included some of them and uh, got a three litre tubs because yeah, once you start catching on them solid bags, they don't last long. So yeah, I'm gonna make a mesh bag up now and get that out there off the corner of the island. Right, be right back. Right guys, so that's that mesh bag all tied up now. Um, I actually doubled it up, ended up doubling it up. The first one wasn't tight enough for my liking, so yeah, retied another one. And this is gonna go out at 14 wraps, well, just short of 14 wraps um, to the corner of this island. It's just annoying about this wind at the moment. So I'm going to try and aim slightly left. Yep, yeah, that'll do. I'll take that. Hey people so yeah i've just I've, I've put the rods back out basically um i've been seeing the odd fish show and they're right out um yeah you know it's obvious isn't it they're showing where right out away from the pressure of other anglers um straight across from me basically there isn't anyone in the swim opposite so what i've done is um, i clipped up to 21 wraps which, when it landed, it is roughly around the area of where they've been showing to. Um, what I've done this time is I've just put a single wafter out there, and then I've put a stiff hinge on, and I've put a washed out bubblegum pop-up on. Um, just, you know, something bright and visual. I'm not putting any spoms out. One thing I've picked up on in this session is, well, I mean, as soon as you cast out in general, really, but especially when the spawn starts going out they just disappear they're gone they're off so yeah it definitely don't ring the dinner the dinner bell in this lake so yeah single hook baits out there basically which at the end of the day i've got confidence in i've i've caught on single hook baits before and especially this time of the year there's, there's nothing wrong with it at all especially if they're not eating much and at the end of the day was it Eden Vale only a few days ago and the fish there had leeches on and Mark is at a different lake today uh, during the day and he's had one and he said to me that that had loads of leeches on it so this is only an hour or, hour or down the road so yeah you know see the same sort of scenario I am seeing some show but yeah you know I don't reckon they're, they're that mobile really so that's all we can do really isn't it um bait and wait as they say although i haven't technically baited but um yeah i think i'm gonna be off today i don't think i'm doing enough right so a few more hours but yeah you never know all right well i'm just gonna make a cup of tea anyway temperature is dropping a little bit to be fair yeah i need warming up a bit Alright guys, speak to you again in a bit, I'll update you in a bit. Alright, bye for now. Hello again. Well yeah, nothing much to report. Um, still seeing some fish show, but no, nothing. Um, most of the stuff is packed away now. You can see behind me there. Most of it is on the barrow. I've just got the rods out. 
behind me there. Um, I'm going to give it a bit longer, but I'm not going to hang around too long. I looked on the weather forecast and the rain is meant to be moving in at 8 o'clock. And like, yeah, it's 90%, like, so no messing around. And it's going to rain all night. So I don't really want to get caught up in that. Um, I have witnessed a couple of fish come out, but yeah, against the rules, basically. There's a, a swim down in the water. You're not meant to fish over to the snags, but I'm literally watching this guy. He's in there plain as day and he's got a baiting pole and he's like shipping over to the snags and he's had three. Well, that's what I've seen. But one of them was actually snagged up and yeah, he had to sort of um, play a bit of tug of war, but it's just unbelievable, isn't it? Like, I don't know, each to their own really, but um, yeah. Well, anyway, I'm going to sign off now, unless, obviously, a miracle does happen. Um, I'm going to sign off now. Um, the next session, well, I've got a social in the middle of Feb, but I don't know if I'm going to be filming that. And, um, yeah, so there might be a video from that, because, to be honest, I might get a day in in between then. But... Um, other than that, that'll be it, because I have the kids are off school now. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching anyway guys, and I shall see you next time.